Welcome to FISMA Compliance for Feed Mills, a resource for small to medium-sized feed mills in the state of South Carolina to help them comply with the Preventive Controls for Animal Food rule. The intent of this presentation is to answer, what do I need to do? Like we described in the last video, feed and ingredient manufacturers have three primary requirements in the Preventive Controls for Animal Food rule of the Food Safety Modernization Act. First, they must train people in their facility. Second, they must follow current good manufacturing practice or CGMP requirements. Third, they must establish and implement a food safety system that is communicated in a written food safety plan. This requires at least a hazard analysis and if necessary, a plan to control significant hazards that occur within the facility. We will begin by discussing how we can train people within the facility. Everyone who manufactures or is in the warehouse must have two parts to their training. First, they must be trained for their specific jobs so that safe animal food is produced. As you can imagine, the type of training may vary from one individual to another. For example, someone who works in the warehouse may need to be trained on how to document the arrival and use of different premixes or medicated feed additives. Someone who works in the control room batching and mixing ingredients may need to be trained on how to follow flushing and sequencing protocols to prevent the unsafe carryover from one batch of feed to the next. Someone who works in the loadout area may need to be trained in which bins they need to pull from in order to load the correct type of feed into the correct truck during the loading process. This type of training can be formal in nature. Some of our South Carolina facilities have different job descriptions and responsibilities that are written, and they document training to each of these individual specific responsibilities. This training could also be informal. For example, some of our other South Carolina facilities have new employees shadow someone in the role until they demonstrate that they are capable of carrying out the responsibility in the correct manner. This type of training can be documented, but doing so is not a requirement. The second part of the training, though, is to be trained on the concepts of animal food safety and animal food hygiene and must be documented. This formal training must be completed by anyone who manufactures, processes, packs, or holds animal food, which again is usually anyone who works in the feed mills receiving area, control room, loadout area, and warehouse. The completion of this requirement must be documented. When you are inspected by the South Carolina Department of Agriculture or FDA for compliance with the Preventive Controls for Animal Food rule, you will be expected to provide documentation for how this training was conducted. There is flexibility for how the training is completed. For example, many of our South Carolina facilities have their own training that was developed by a supervisor or manager, and then they have documented that that training occurred. More commonly, this training requirement is completed by having individuals watch a video that was developed by a trade association or an educational institution on animal food hygiene and animal food safety, and then the facility documents that training. One free option is to have individuals watch the YouTube video at this link, which was developed by Kansas State University. You can then document this training. And the documentation can be pretty simple. Just the name of the individual who watched the training, the date that they completed it, and the initials of the supervisor who oversaw its completion. Another level of training that may be appropriate for facilities is to identify a Preventive Controls Qualified Individual, or a PCQI. This is actually a requirement for most of our South Carolina facilities. In the few facilities that are exempt due to size or the types of activities being conducted, it is still beneficial to have someone designated as being responsible for animal food safety. A PCQI is trained on the process of identifying hazards, how to evaluate them, and how to make decisions regarding their control. There is a specific training course that was developed by the Food Safety Preventive Controls Alliance where you can earn a certificate like this one displayed. Many land-grant institutions, universities, and trade associations offer this type of training class for a small fee. 
Attending this course is not the only way to become a PCQI, but it is the most common that we see in the industry. Once individuals within the facility are trained, the facility must also follow current good manufacturing practice or CGMP requirements. These establish the baseline standard for how the facility looks and operates so that safe animal food can be manufactured. There are eight areas of the CGMP requirements. They explain expectations for personnel of facilities that manufacture, process, pack, or hold feed or ingredients. They address expectations for the plant and grounds regarding drainage, pest control, and trash, so that the plant and grounds is not an environment for pests. There are requirements for sanitation, water supply and plumbing, equipment and utensils, and plant operations. There are also requirements for the holding and distribution for feed and ingredients, as well as for human food byproducts intended to be used as animal food, such as wheat mids. The most common violation of CGMP requirements are regarding management's control of the facility. For example, if a facility has written procedures that it will do one thing, but it's not being done, or there's no documentation of it being done, that violation falls on the shoulders of management. Facilities are also sometimes cited for problems in pest control or sanitation. One way you may want to establish if there are gaps in your facility's current good manufacturing practice requirements is to conduct a CGMP self-audit. The South Carolina Department of Agriculture has a Preventive Control for Animal Food Readiness Audit, which is available to feed or ingredient manufacturers to download for free and use as a self-audit in their facilities. Finally, facilities must establish and implement a food safety system. This is commonly communicated in a written food safety plan and, at a minimum, has a hazard analysis. The food safety plan has two required components. The first, the hazard analysis, identifies hazards that have the possibility of occurring in raw materials or ingredients, such as aflatoxin if the facility is using corn. The hazard analysis also identifies hazards that may occur during the process itself, such as metal that may occur in finished product if the manufacturing facility uses equipment that has moving metal parts. These hazards must be evaluated for both severity and probability. If the combination of their severity and probability is high, the hazard may require a preventive control. In this case, the description of the preventive control, its management components, and a recall plan are also then required. If you have additional questions regarding the Food Safety Modernization Act or the Preventive Controls for Animal Food Rule, please reach out to us at the South Carolina Department of Agriculture. Our contact information is listed here.